capital, uh, getting money from shareholders, releasing more shares to get capital from them, is would be spent on capital expenditure, equipment, plant, houses, buildings, cars. Uh, selling of assets would release big amounts of cash to, to invest on other expenses, exp purchases. Uh, a mortgage is a long-term loan for building it, buying the new property, the new factory. Uh, retain profit uh, is profit from previous years that's been stacking up. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of that at the moment because of the uh, fact they're in debt. Uh, and leasing the property, obviously, to, to, to lease out land or to lease out part of the factory they're not using would uh, would generate capital funding for other projects. Okay, so we're on page uh, five of seven. Uh, here we've got another big question here. Discuss the suitability, uh, advantages and disadvantages of the two chosen sources of funding in relation to Aaron Furniture Limited business plan. So, uh, well, the business plan is actually involving uh, several projects, biomass burner, new factory, changing production methods um, so uh, to get all the marks here you need to identify the projects that the, the business needs money for and pick a suitable source of finance for each one so buying a new factory would clearly be uh, a mortgage uh, long term 25 years for that uh, for a biomass burner uh, clearly uh, there's, there's, there's the government that's offering this uh, low interest grants um, for creating new jobs in new factories uh, and if in this case for environmental uh, economic eco-friendly eco activity uh, which would be good uh, bank loans could also be used for the biomass burner uh, if they didn't qualify from a government grant or loan low interest loan um, in terms of change in production uh, you could uh, use um, you can lease equipment so that would pay for the equipment side of it uh, you can sell more shares uh, but that would dilute the family ownership and it's privately owned so it's difficult to sell shares in a private limited company and um, you could sell assets so the old factory you could sell to release some cash because uh, they own that they've been trading 35 years uh, and if they've got any retained profits left they could pump that money into it uh, all the owners the directors could actually pump in money from their own uh, savings to pump into this business okay question 3a from the case study identify and explain two ways in which Aaron Furniture Limited is a global business consider the future plans of the business as well as the current operations well uh, four marks and don't waste a lot of time on this one uh, so two marks for identifying it plus a further mark for explaining the link to the globalization well globalization is no more complicated than a business trading in more than one country and the fact that uh, people uh, around the world want everything from around the world we want things from other countries and other countries want things from here uh, is what drives globalization so uh, the two possible responses are looking at imports to, to, from other countries uh, and it's looking at importing furniture from Sweden well made good quality Swedish uh, good design uh, from Sweden to supplement the orders and the, uh, the product range in the UK uh, and it's looking at importing wood from uh, outside the UK uh, if, if that's an option as well and it's looking at exporting uh, furniture to Canada and other Eurozone countries as we part of the EU so uh, the fact that it's buying and selling on a global platform uh, are good examples of global why this is a global business okay question 3a part 2 Aaron Furniture Limited is considering exporting to the Eurozone and or Canada the business forecast sales for the next 12 months before taking account of changes in demand or in exchange rates are as follows uh, Eurozone uh, a currency exchange or Canada currency exchange and if it asks you the exchange rates uh, calculations then uh, you need to look at um, uh, the changes so it, it will give you the exchange rates in the exam question so for instance uh, when your when one pound is worth 1.32 euros and a pound is worth 2.2 dollars so if it asks you to talk about demand uh, 
to those two countries, it will say something like calculate Aaron Furniture's limited new revenue in the Eurozone and Canada in pounds, then uh, that the Eurozone is no more than um, 350 plus uh, that percentage increase, which in this case uh, is uh, 4 divided by 1 times 350. So the increase would be, uh, if the interest rates went up, it would be going up to £364. With regard to Canada, uh, it would be a, a separate calculation uh, because Canada is worth $2.2. Uh, so if the interest rates went up to Canada, what's the question asking again? If the interest rates went up to Canada, uh, it's looking at an eighth. So Canada's an increase of an eighth. So an eighth of 300,000 is 24 pounds. Uh, okay, so question 3A part 3. So so this question is talking about the exchange rates uh, and the predicted in extract 8, which means that in the Eurozone, the pound is now worth 1.386, so it's gone up. Uh, and in Canada, the pound is now worth 2.112, which has gone down. Uh, and it's asking to calculate the new revenues in Euros and Canadian dollars, assuming that the demand has not changed. So uh, all you're doing is times in the English turnover by the uh, exchange rate. So here you're charging, uh, to, to get the Eurozone uh, exchange currency, you're times in the current forecasted sales in pound notes times the new exchange rate, 1.386, which is saying that the company now will generate 485,100 euros selling furniture to Europe. And in terms of Canada, it's 300,000. Uh, times 2.112 uh, which is 633 Canadian dollars okay uh, and question 3a part 4 how might the change in the euro exchange rate affect sales of Aaron furniture limited products in the eurozone uh, well uh, that's a big question um, and the answer is there for all to see uh, and basically if the increase in the value of the pound means that the UK exports are more expensive than before uh, for Eurozone countries, uh, then sales will fall. Eurozone countries will stop buying products from the UK uh, and buy products from other Eurozone countries or Asia or other parts of the world. Uh, unless the Aaron Furniture goes are particularly unique uh, and special and beautifully made and well designed, then those prices might not put people off, uh, but they'll have to be particularly special if the exchange rate increases, generally demand will fall if prices go up. Okay, so uh, last question. Discuss factors affecting the exports of goods to other countries and recommend whether Aaron Furniture Limited should export to the Eurozone or Canada. Uh, well, it's worth eight marks, so it's looking like three marks for identifying the different factors, and additional marks up to three for explaining each factor and two marks for making a recommendation. So make a decision uh, and back it up with some evidence from the case study. So competition in the country of export would have an impact. Trade agreements uh, would have an impact. So um, exchange rates we've talked about would have an impact. Demand obviously would have an impact. And the local economy, if it's doing well, would have a good impact. If it's doing badly, a negative impact. So uh, lots to talk about there for those eight mark questions. And question 3B, to get your last 10 marks of the 90 marks, discuss how Aaron Furniture Limited is trying to be a sustainable manufacturer and why this is important for a business. Well, uh, if we're looking at this question for 10 marks, uh, it's in two parts. So the areas it's looking at, buying local wood means we don't have to transport it big distances and pollute the atmosphere. Buying sustainable wood means uh, not ripping out forests. Uh, just for the sake of it, planting 10 trees for every tree we pull down maybe and putting in the biomass burner means uh, reducing waste uh, and uh, and not burning fossil fuels and polluting the atmosphere. So uh, why is it important? Well, it's important for the reasons that it's given there, look, reputation of the business. Uh, if people like what they're doing, they're going to be more loyal to it. Ethically, it's doing the right thing. 
for the uh, environment, the workers and the local communities. Legally, uh, they're sticking to pollution, waste and regulations, so they're not going to get taxed heavily on carbon and waste. And financially, it's always good business sense because uh, all those things reduce costs uh, and ultimately improve uh, profits. So uh, uh, that's how to get 90 marks on that first test paper. Uh, you did that in 24 minutes. So if you've got 90 minutes tomorrow, Friday to do that, then... Uh, well done, means you're well prepared.